Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. This video is going to be about what does Mr. Hino think is better, time, rotations, or degrees. Stay with me, okay? Before we get into the video, I just want to let you know of an update. Mr. Hino's Robotics is on Twitter. I know I've been kind of all over the place on social media, Instagram, Facebook. I just didn't know if I had a ton of time for those kind of things. So I just kind of finally decided on Twitter. So check the link below in the description for my Twitter account. And what I'm going to basically do on Twitter is have some fun stuff. Definitely links to the videos, but definitely some cool things like ideas for other videos and things like that. So check it out. It'll be fun. Okay, before we get started, I just wanted to give a shout out to Amazing Gaming. What's up? Okay, so let's get into this. Um, there's three reasons why I prefer degrees over rotations and time. Now, before I get going on this video, by no means do I want to change what you're doing. If you love time or rotations, please, by all means, Mr. Hino's philosophy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm just telling you the, the reasons why I prefer degrees. If you love the, what you're doing, keep what you're doing and stay successful. But if you're just starting off and trying to figure out, hmm, I got three choices here. I'm, I'm just going to give you my preferences on why I think it's better. You know what? If you have a reason why you think time or rotations is better, hit me up in the comment section. I'd love to check out and see what your feedback is on that. But anyway, let's get going with number one. The reason, the first reason I like uh, degrees is you, if you're doing an FLL mission or something where you need to get to a specific point, you can do the degrees trick. Let me go ahead and show you what that is. Okay, so I'm here at the board and let me go ahead and show you what the degrees trick is. I know I've done this before, but if you're new to my channel, you probably didn't see this. So let's say that I want this robot to go from this blue line, and I've kind of lined up the axle here, or rod, and I want it to go to this other blue line. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead, I've already gone to port view, and I'm going to go ahead and select it, and then I'm going to go up and over to my B motor. It can be my C motor too, but let's just stick with B. So I'll put this robot down here, being careful that it still stays at, and I just messed that up. So let me get, let me get it back to zero. I want to make sure it's at zero degrees, so I'm not going to, there's zero right there. So what I'm going to basically do is just push this robot, and if I need to go straight, I'm going to make sure I push it straight until I get to my desired point, which would be right there you can see that's lined up so all I do is look at my screen 2335 degrees so what I do now is if I go to my Mindstorm software I'll just do a move tank block put it on for 2335 degrees and it should stop right there so let me go ahead and go to my laptop I'll be back and put this program on Okay, I'm here at my laptop, and it was just a single move tank block. So there's my move tank block. There's the 2,335 degrees. Let's download that and get back to the board. Okay, the program's been downloaded. Let's go ahead and check and see how accurate that was. And there you have it. So... The reason I like this is there's really no messing around with, hmm, how long would that be? Uh, let's figure out this on rotations. Um, it's just a flat out, I see it on the screen and I just put it into the program. Now I hear what you're saying. You're probably saying, well, Mr. You know, if we can just divide uh, degrees, the 360 into your um, amount of degrees, we'll get the rotations. You'd be correct. Um, but I don't necessarily have to do all that math, but just for fun, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so if we take those 2,335 degrees and divide it by 360, because that would be the amount of degrees in a rotation, 
we should end up with 6.486. You guys can figure out the mess here. You can see how we can do this with rotations, but it's going to get a little messy. So let me go ahead and just put in 6.486 rotations here in the program, and then we'll head back over to the table. Okay, everybody, I'm back here at the table. I just put in the 6.486 and a ton of ones uh, for rotations. Let's go ahead and see how accurate that is. Okay, not too shabby, pretty accurate. So for those of you that would insist on rotation saying, well, Mr. You know, we can just divide the amount of degrees by 360, you'd be correct, but guess what? If I do degrees, I don't have to do all that math. But then again, you know, it's up to you. So let's go ahead and go to number two. The second reason why I like degrees over rotations or time is if we're doing an FLL mission and we have our program, and we have our robot going at a certain motor speed, and I want to change that motor speed, if I'm doing degrees, I can change that motor speed and not necessarily affect the program. But think about this. If I'm doing time, and I want to change the motor speed on my program, now that has just messed up my entire program where I have to now adjust all the times. If I'm doing a program using degrees and I want to change my motor speed, it's still going to do the same amount of degrees, no matter how fast or slow I'm going. Now, if you don't believe me, let's go back to the into orbit board and I'll show you a mission showing that. Okay, so I have this robot here programmed to go forward at 30% motor speed here, well, negative 30. And what I'm going to show is just to demonstrate that this program will work to, no matter what motor speed I put it on as long as the degrees are correct. So let's go ahead and watch this. It's kind of weird not to see all the other models out here, huh? Okay, so we got that to work um, at 30% motor speed. So let's go ahead and change it to 75% motor speed. Okay, I'm back. So the only thing I did was go back to the program and bump up the motor speed. Instead of negative 30, it's now, now at negative 75. So the beauty of it is I didn't have to touch the degrees because they're going to go the same amount of degrees anyway. As opposed to time, where it would now totally throw off all the time because now my robot's going faster. So let's go ahead and check this one out. Woo, this thing is blazing. All right, so we got, yeah, we got green. Okay, so we're bumping this up to 75% motor speed and the degrees are still the same. So this is one of those cases where it's a, it's a nice thing that you have degrees. So if you switch motor speed, you don't necessarily have to revamp your entire program. Hey, let's check this out. Let's go down to 10% motor speed, run the same exact program. Okay, everybody, this is going to be the same exact program, just 10% motor speed. Sorry that this thing will go so slow, but that's what 10% motor speed does. What we're trying to prove, though, is that with degrees, all we have to do is change the motor speed here, and we don't have to necessarily do anything to the amount of degrees. like watching a sloth okay so there you have it guys same exact program just change the motor speed if we wanted to and we don't even have to touch the degrees if we were working with time we would have had to change a whole bunch of you know now items on our program we have to change the times because everything now is different so with degrees Chalk one up for, it's a whole lot easier when you program. And the last reason I love degrees over all the others, rotations and time, 
is just because I've used degrees so much, I already know what certain degrees are for certain types of maneuvers. So if I want my robot here to do a perfect 90 degree turn, I already know that that's 360 degrees. So it's just easy for me just because I've done this for so long that I can just input those numbers and I already know what that is. So let me go ahead and show you. I have this robot here and what I want it to do is I just want it to do a perfect 90 degree turn right here. And what I'm going to do is I already set this for 360 degrees. So it's going to go forward and make that perfect turn. Let's go ahead and watch it. And it's already set up to go, you know, straight forward from that. So I already know that that's 360 degrees. So basically what I can do now is just cut that in half. So if I want my robot to go forward and do half of that, then I just cut that in half to 180. So let me show you that. Okay, so I'm gonna, I want my robot in this case here to go forward and basically do this 45 degree angle. So that's where I set it for 180 degrees. Let's go ahead and watch that. And now I have that ready to go 45 degrees and whatever mission I'm doing, I can now take, take on that direction. So all in all, again, um, let's recap. I like degrees because I can do the degrees trick, go to port view and figure out exactly how many degrees I need to go. Second of all, if I'm doing a mission and a program and I need to fix my motor speed, I don't have to change my degrees. And for thirdly, this is just a Mr. Hino, you know, prior knowledge. If I'm doing missions and I need to do, you know, certain angle turns, I've already just memorized how many degrees I need to go. But then again, when you do, when you pick something, you're going to pick up that also. If you're going to do time and rotations, you'll, you'll start to just memorize those things too. So guys, hopefully this was helpful. And if you're just starting off, and you're torn between what to use and if this is helpful go for that but if not keep doing what you're doing and hopefully you're su still successful okay guys i am mr hino from mr Hino's lego robotics i'm out Thank you.